The first time I boosted up Cube VR and loaded into my own randomly generated world, I was awestruck with how beautiful it was. Mixer already kind of. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. The crystal clear image quality had me transported into this voxel world where somebody asked the question, what if Minecraft was pretty? Stunning lighting with dazzling god rays and pitch black darkness at nights or in deep caves really show off the HDR capabilities of your PSVR 2. Cube VR is easily up there with Red Matter and Kayak VR as one of the best looking games on the headset. In terms of gameplay, the Minecraft inspiration is undeniable, although some may feel disappointed that it is not nearly as fleshed out. You'll spawn in your world and from there you're pretty much left on your own devices. You'll have access to a magical briefcase that acts as both your menu, your inventory and your guide. I recommend you check out the objectives tab in the briefcase if you're looking to get to grips with how everything works. It does a good job of helping you create the tools you need to make the most out of this world. Once you have those tools though, the rest is up to you and this is where the game could really shine or fall down depending on what kind of experience you are looking for, which is what makes this game difficult to review. There's no story here to progress, there are no enemies for you to fight or defend against, it's just you and your creativity. There are deep caves for you to explore and an infinite world for you to build upon, but if you're someone who prefers structure in your game, you may become bored easily and be disappointed. However, if you just want a relaxing, zen-like experience where you can build and explore to your heart's content, then you may find this to be one of the PSVR 2's best titles to date. There may not be a whole lot to do in Cube, but what's here is done very well. Take for instance the crafting. In order to craft, you have to find the recipe, which are these sheets of paper which are very easy to find that float around in the world. After that, you need to mine whatever resources necessary to craft it, usually wood and stone. For wood, you'll need an axe to cut down a tree, which you do by striking it three times in the same spot, which is a little harder than it may sound and introduces a skill element into something that is usually fairly brainless in a game like this. After you fell your tree, it turns into a bunch of logs for you to chop up and chopping these logs is incredibly satisfying as they realistically cut to the length you hit them at and not some predefined models that appear after you hit them. When you're ready to collect your wood, you bust out your handy magical bucket at the press of a button which sucks up all the materials you pointed at and can even be powered up with crystals to boost suction or change its function. When you have your materials, you check your recipe to basically get a blueprint of how you make your item. Now unlike in Minecraft, this is done physically as you attach the materials together into the correct shape. It almost feels like you're playing with Lego or something like that and it's quite enjoyable, especially for the more complex creations like a furnace for example where you need to join like 80 plus pieces together. It's a system that demonstrates that this game is taking advantage of VR as a medium. Recipes range from the tools you need like axes, shovels and pickaxes to home decor like chairs, tables and picture frames. But if you want more options you can head over to the mod section in the menu and choose from a list of community created mod blocks to download to your game, a feature that not many PlayStation games can brag about. Speaking of options, you've got a decent selection here on how you want to play. You can play standing or turn on a seasoned mode which allows a crouch toggle. You can also turn on smooth turning and there's both smooth locomotion and teleportation available at all times. The teleportation option can come in handy as there is sadly no jump button, at least not that I could find. But the settings don't stop at VR comfort. You can decide if you take fall damage, if deer turn into fireworks, if shot with a bow, and a side note, the rabbits do not turn into fireworks if you shoot them, you'll just feel bad about that if you try it. You can even select how long days and nights are and more. Multiplayer is on the roadmap for Cube VR. That addition alone would really enhance the experience here. Other features planned on the roadmap like Combat could also do the same. So it's very possible that Cube will be a title that gets better with age and broadens its appeal as these features get added. Until then, for $30, it's going to be up to you to decide if this kind of experience is worth it to you. If you're able to find enjoyment in gathering resources and building things in a stunning world and peaceful environment, then it's easy to recommend. If you need something more structured or action packed, then this may not be for you. As someone who personally never enjoyed a game like Minecraft, I can't help but feel a pull to return to Cube. 
not because I want to build anything in particular, but just because I want to be in that world a little while longer.